G'day guys, Will here. So we're starting out the new year with some brand new toys for the channel. We have in front of us here a Creality Ender 5 3D printer. Now, those of you who've been following the channel for quite some time now would remember about two, two and a half years ago now, I can't remember exactly when, I think it was mid-2017, mid I actually purchased a 3D printer from Aldi of all places. Uh, they had a, what was it called, a Cocoon Create Touch that they had on special there for about 550 bucks. And uh, I did a couple of printings with it. I did a video about it, the uh, unboxing assembly first setup and a couple of things. But uh, look, to be honest with you guys, I never really got into it. I found it slow, tedious. Uh, I had a lot of problems with printing and uh, eventually I just actually just gave up on it and I ended up returning it for a refund. Now, props to Audi. They did give me a full refund, no questions asked, after almost a year of using the thing, which was absolutely amazing. But uh, yeah, I had problems with uh, irregularities in the prints. I think that the uh, the print bed was maybe a little bit bent or something like that and just never really spent the time to fully understand it, get to know it properly and really give it a proper chance. But uh, in the course of the last couple of years, 3D printing has become a lot more accessible with a lot of new printers, including this one coming onto the market that really do offer you know that next level of quality and performance for a very, very reasonable price. But uh, yeah, I'm not claiming on being a 3D printing expert by any means here. So this is very much gonna be an unboxing and first impression style video. There are a bunch of really, really good quality videos out there. I'll link a couple in the description below if you wanna see a review of one of these from somebody who actually knows what they're talking about and has a bit of experience with things that they can compare it to. So this isn't really a review video, this is more of a first experience, and just letting you know what you can expect as somebody like me who knows very, very little about 3D printing, whether you are able to get this up and running straight out of the box without too much hassle, or whether it ends up being a nightmare. So. Let's get stuck into getting this thing all set up and get our first print done. All right, so as we unbox this, let's just talk about why I've chosen the end of five. So I asked a bunch of guys in our Discord community about 3D printing and what they recommended for a relative noob like me. And uh, pretty much everybody recommended the end of three or the end of three pro. Now I was having a look at it and I saw the end of five had been released relatively recently. And as you can see in the little booklet here, we now have this sort of four post, more rigid style printer. The Ender 3 had two uprights, still out of an aluminium profile, but two uprights, which means that inherently this should be a bit more rigid, which should give us slightly better print quality as well. So a bit of a step up from the Ender 3 Pro, but there is a couple of little differentiating features there as well. And we'll talk about that a little bit later on in the video once I've got my head around everything. But for now, let's just get everything unboxed. There is a little bit of assembly involved here. So we've got our printing head here. I assume that's the printing head. Yeah, it looks like it is. I've got no idea what all of these things are supposed to be called. Uh, so excuse my ignorance here. As I said, this is very much a noobs video, but we'll get everything unboxed here and then we'll go through everything in more detail a bit later on. So this is our little control module. Now it's a little bit weird that they've packaged this with the knob facing upwards because that is kind of, you know, you can probably actually see, yeah, you can see there on the packaging, it's actually been pressing up against that in, um, in transport. So hopefully that's not damaged, but uh, we'll get everything out of the box first and then we'll take everything out of the anti-static sealed bags a little bit later on. So lift this up as well. Another piece, all very nicely packaged other than, the, um, other than that being the wrong way up. I think probably that would be better off the other way around. But uh, we've got our top strut here. I guess this is the bit that sits across the top or it might be one of the, I don't even know. I'm not even gonna pretend like I know what I'm talking about here. Let's just get it unboxed and then we'll have a look at the destructions afterwards. So then we've got the main frame it looks like here. So we've got our magnetic bed here. Now that is one thing that I do know. This is a magnetic printing surface here. So we can actually take that off and then peel it away from the print once we're done, which is supposedly quite nice. Uh, that was one of the issues I had with the Aldi printer I had previously was that it was really difficult. You actually had to use a paint scraper to get it off. So hopefully we've got a nice flat printing bed. It is a manual adjustment type bed. So you do have to use the little wheels here to adjust the, uh, the pitch but uh, that's not a big deal. Hopefully it'll be a pretty much set and forget at least for each print. And then we've got either our top frame or our bottom frame. I'm not sure which it is, but we'll figure it out a little bit later. So there's a little bit of assembly required here. We've got some plugs and things, but nothing too bad. It all feels like it's nice, decent quality stuff though. It all seems to be pretty precise. Uh, yeah, no obvious sort of shortcuts in terms of quality that I can see so far. So uh, 
yeah, all looks good. So we'll set that one aside as well. And then lift up this piece and we should see whatever is the top or the bottom piece underneath this. So oh, we've got our power supply as well by the looks of things. So we've got a little goodie bag here. We'll have a look inside that in just a moment. We've got our included little roll of white PLA as well. So that's in addition to the roll that I purchased separately. We've got more wires and stuff. So yeah, okay, that's our power supply there. So this must be the bottom plate. Nice sturdy power supply there as well. So we've got all the installation instructions actually on the power supply itself, which is pretty cool. We've got a power switch there. Pretty standard kind of stuff there. It's set to 230 volts out of the box there as well. So it's not actually a switch mode power supply. You do have to make sure it's selected on the right zone. Uh, I can't actually see the details of the power supply there. I can't see the wattage or anything through the uh, casing. I don't really want to pull it apart. So we won't worry about that. I'm sure one of the other guys that has done a detailed review on this module will uh, be able to tell you. We might look it up in the specs a little bit later on as well. So set this one aside too. And then we've got our upright pieces of profile here, which we'll use to build it up. And that looks like everything. So we'll quickly put all this stuff back in the box and then we can set everything out on the table and have a closer look. All right, so we've got everything in front of us here now. Now, I apologize I can't fit everything in the frame at once, but I'll take you through each individual component. Thankfully for me, the manual is also really comprehensive here as well. It lists everything in detail. So starting off over on the left, we have our base plate, which includes the power supply and the brains. And we have the top plate, the hotbed as well. Then we have our Z-axis frame, which the hotbed will bolt onto. We've got our aluminium extrusion uprights as well, which we'll use to mount the top plate. And then here we have what they call the extruder kit. Now this is what actually feeds the uh, filament through into the white tube that you see. The print head itself of the extruder is actually in this part. So I got that a little bit wrong before. So you can see here, it sort of plugs in. It's got a little stepper motor inside it. And then there's a mechanism on the front. So the filament feeds through the hole. You squeeze a little trigger here and then it feeds through past the stepper motor. The stepper motor sort of feeds it up through this nozzle which then feeds it into the tube. We'll have a look at that in more detail in just a moment. Then we have our control panel here as well. It's got a push button as well as a rotary encoder or a rotary dial. Now there's no rear cover over the electronics but I really don't see that as being an issue. It's all gonna be pretty protected once it's all put together anyway. And then we've got our little goodie box here as well that comes with a bunch of accessories. So I'll open that up. We've got our IEC connector here, which is an Australian plug. So that was nice that they included the correct regional plug. And then we've got a bunch of bags here. It looks like we've got a tool kit. So that looks like it's got everything that we're going to need to assemble everything. Looks like we've got some side cutters in there as well. It looks like, yeah, side cutters. We've got a little drill bit there as well, which we can use to clear out the extruder should we need to. And then some cable ties as well. Then we've got a few separate nozzles as well of different sizes some little retention clips as well, and some Chinese instructions, which makes me a little bit nervous. Then we do have a paint scraper as well, so that may come in use later on. I didn't think that we were gonna need one, but maybe we do. And then we've also got the little armature here as well, which we use to mount our filament roll. And lastly, our little SD card and USB SD card reader. So we'll quickly open that up as well. And it is a eight gigabyte card, so plenty of storage there. I can't imagine we'll ever fill that up with G-code files. Now, one other thing that I did want to mention here is the quality of the instructions that they include as well. I was kind of thinking that maybe being a Chinese product it might be really hard to follow after seeing the Chinese instructions here. But uh, look, this is really detailed. You can see all the steps are very cleanly laid out. It even shows you a picture of the type of screw you need to use for each part. So I really don't see that we're going to have any issues putting this together at all. It all looks pretty straightforward. So anyway, let's get this thing together and see if it all works. Dream to kill a dog. 
Okay, moment of truth. Time to flick the power switch and see if we can make some sparks. Oh, looks like we're good. Yeah, yeah, everything looks like it's working. We boot it up, so that is definitely a positive sign. So let's have a look at what we've got here on the screen. I have had a little look at the manual before I fired everything up. And uh, so I'm somewhat more informed than I was before. So we've got our extruder temperature here, which is the commanded temperature and the actual temperature from the thermistor that's installed. So that's on the extruder or the little printhead. That is our bed temperature and our commanded bed temperature again. Uh, our fan speed, so you can see at the moment the um, cooling fan for the extruder is not running. You can actually hear the secondary fan running, but there's a fan on the side as well that is not spinning currently. Now these are our positions for our three axes, so X, Y, and Z. And you can see at the moment we've got question marks in all of those positions because it doesn't know where it is, hasn't got a reference point yet. So we will need to go in and uh, do our auto homing and everything like that. We've got our print speed there. Then we've got our print time. So that's obviously showing zero at the moment because we're not printing anything. And then our print percentage here as well. So obviously zero because we're not printing anything currently. Our ready status as well. And I should probably peel this little uh, protective layer off the screen as well, I suppose. Everybody loves a good peel, so. There you go, hopefully you're satisfied with that. So essentially there are three things that I need to do yet before I can call this ready to start printing. So obviously we need to load our filament, but before I load the filament, I also wanna do a auto homing calibration so it knows where it is in space, as well as leveling the print bed as well. So we're gonna press in on the button here, and good, the button does work. And we're gonna scroll down here, we're gonna have prepare. So we'll go to prepare, and then we want to go auto home. So when we press this, the bed should come up. There it goes, it's doing things, it's moving. And if all goes well, we should see the home display zeroed out once it's in place. So it's going to take a moment just to sort of come up into position. So the bed's coming up. This is a good opportunity to just check that nothing snags as well. Move that cable. I don't really want that rubbing. We might use a cable tie or something to try and move this cable out of the way actually because we really don't want that snagging on anything. Might tie it to these guys over here I think because it's never going to move anywhere. And there we go, the bed is now in position at the top of the z-axis and you can see all three of our positions are now zeroed out so it knows exactly where it is. So the next thing we want to do now is our leveling. So we go back into the menu again, go to prepare, and there's a couple of different ways that the manual explains that you can do this, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go disable steppers and actually go through the process manually and show you exactly how it goes. So we'll go disable steppers, we'll go disable all steppers, and what that's doing is it's disabling all the stepping motors so that we can actually move things around by hand and make our adjustments. So it's a little tricky to see here, but we've got four of these rotating knobs, one in each corner of the leveling bed, and then we've got a little nozzle up here as well. So we'll bring that into focus for you. And you can see just there, that little pointy bit underneath there, that is the nozzle. So what we want to do is we want to put a piece of paper on top of the bed here and then we just want to slide it underneath and adjust the level just until the nozzle is slightly skimming the piece of paper. So we'll just grab a regular A4 sheet of paper. And we're going to slide the paper under there like that. So you can see there, it's just going underneath the nozzle. And then we're going to adjust the little tip screw it out until it's just touching. We're gonna to need to go around twice because when we get to this side, obviously adjusting this side because we're making such a large adjustment right now, it's gonna throw things out again. So we'll go up until it's just skimming. Not quite. Okay, that's just skimming now. And now we wanna move across to the other side. And same deal again, we'll release the little wheel Just skimming. That's a little too tight. A little too loose. Okay, that's that one good. And we'll go back over this side again. 
All right, now we want to do the front. So it's a little easier to see from here. That little pointy bit that you can see just there is the nozzle of the extruder, and this is the wheel that we're using to adjust. So we want to wind it out until the gap is almost closed. And I need to wind this side out as well. Just slide our piece of paper through. And then bring it over the other side. So once we've got all four corners pretty close, we then just want to go around a couple more times and just make absolutely sure that the amount of resistance that we feel in each corner is about the same. So you can see that one's snagging a little bit, so we just want to loosen that one just a touch. There we go. Feels good and feels good so we are completely level now that is awesome so now it's time to load the filament so to load in our filament in this case pla we're going to go into the menu again so press the button down go down to prepare scroll down to preheat pla and then again preheat pla and you should see now you've got a program temperature or commanded temperature of 185 degrees on the extruder and you'll see that temperature come up. So you want to wait until that reaches the maximum temperature or the 185 degrees that's preset there. And then we can start the process of loading our filament. All right, and then we just want to feed it up through the tube. There you go, it's going up through the tube. Until we see a little molten worm coming out the bottom. So feed it up through, I can see it coming through the tube, so I know how close it is. About. 10 centimetres, 5 centimetres, 2 or 3 centimetres more, and we should start to see now a little bit of luck. Here it comes. I can see a little bit starting to come through. There it is. Okay, so we're good. We're pre-fed. So over to the software side of things now. You can see we've got our user manual here, which I assume is exactly the same as what we had before, yeah, it's just exactly the same as what we had in the uh, in the little printed guidebook. So it's nice that we get a soft copy as well there. We've got the software and drive, I assume that means driver, troubleshooting guide, some pre-made models as well. So we've got Creality Slicer, we'll install that. And finish. So then we have under drive, I assume these are the drivers for the USB interface, but we're not going to be printing by USB, we're just going to be printing straight from the SD card, so we're not going to bother installing those. So now we're going to open up our Creality Slicer software. So open it up, and we've got a first time run wizard here. So select our language, is going to be English. What kind of machine do we have? That is a very good question. What is it called? An end of five. There it is. End of five. So, we go next. There we are. All right. So, this actually looks exactly the same as the software that came with my Cocoon Create. So, I'm assuming it must just be like off the shelf software that they supply for all of these various different clones. So, we're going to start off by printing something just nice and basic that we can use to test this guy out. So, what I like to do, this is what I did with my Cocoon Create as well, print a little calibration cube to start with just to see exactly how things all space out. So, you can find this on Thingiverse. I'll provide the link in the description below for you guys as well. We click on download and you can see it's downloading there down the bottom here. And we'll close this off and we'll drag it in to the software and there we go. So it's a 20 by 20 millimeter little calibration cube there. So you can see it's gonna take 22 minutes and use five grams of PLA according to the thing here. So it's, we're gonna say fast print here, Creality PLA because that's what we're printing with. And uh, let's just see how it goes straight out of the box I think. Let's not change any of the other settings and just see just how easy this goes straight out of the box. So we do have expert settings here. We go switch to full settings. And you can see we can make adjustments here, print speed 80, printing temperature 200, which I believe is good for PLA. Bed temperature 60, I believe is good for PLA as well. I've seen a few people print at uh, 60. Fill density controls how densely filled the inside. Value around 20 is usually enough. Let's, yeah, maybe we will adjust that to 20 actually, just because I think that 10 is not going to be enough for a cube like this. 
And uh, yeah, we should be all good. We've got a diameter of 1.75, which is what a filament is, and a flow rate of 100%. Nozzle size is four millimeters, which is what we've got installed by default. So if I remember correctly now from my old 3D printer, we go tool path to SD, and it saved it to the D drive as XYZ calibration cube.g code. So let's go chuck it in the 3D printer now and see what happens. Click her in and over to the display. So tap, scroll down to print from TF card. And we can see there we've got XYZ calibration cube. So bed is heating, so let's see what it does. Maybe I can see it. to retract and do its thing. How hot is it? Yeah, it's fine, peel it off. Oh, it's just sliding, didn't even need to do anything. Look at that, came straight off. That looks pretty cool. So let's peel off the, um, the bottom part here. I probably should have printed it without that, but uh, considering absolutely no pre-calibration whatsoever, I'd say that that is pretty darn good. All we did was just set the bed level. Didn't make any other adjustments other than just increasing the infill from 10% to 20%, which it sh probably should have been by default anyway. And I reckon that looks pretty darn cool. So I think it's time to try printing something a bit bigger. All right, so the first thing that I actually need to print is a 120 millimeter to three inch duct for the wind simulator. So let's give this one a try. So again, this was just something that I grabbed off Thingiverse. Uh, they suggested an infill of 10%. Uh, he said he printed it with 20% and it seemed a little bit too strong, but because I'm gonna be using hose clamps to clamp onto this, we'll obviously cover this when I do the video on the wind sim, but uh, I'm gonna do a fill density of 15%. So we'll set it to 15%. Uh, everything else can be the same. Print speed, 80 millimeters per second. Printing temperature, 200. Bed temperature, 60. So we'll save it to the SD card. It's saying it's gonna take 10 hours and one minute to print. And uh, yeah, see whether it does as good a job of this as it did of our little calibration cube. Maybe I can see it. Maybe I can up exactly almost exactly 12 hours 11 hours and 46 minutes and 25 seconds print time apparently so we'll let it cool down for a few minutes and see how it came out there we go just like that just comes straight off awesome now that is way better quality than what I used to get out of the Aldi print I mean I never really printed anything quite like this but uh, the resolution there is so much better, it's just so much smoother and there's so much more consistency in the surface. I mean, you could give that a light sand and it would literally be like a piece of cast plastic. So let's see if we can peel off the uh, adhesion layer here now. Quickly crack that off. Easy. So we've got a couple of little strings there where the, uh, where the hole is, but that's to be expected where the little holes are. We can just uh, clean that up with a little drill or a file or something. But yeah, otherwise, absolutely perfect. So, now we've just got to print another one. 
All right, guys, so that is my first experience with the Ender 5 3D printer. And yeah, look, overall, very, very simple, very straightforward to set up. Didn't run into any problems whatsoever at all with the creation of my first print and my second and third print as well. Obviously, we did those two ducks that you saw in the later part of the video. And yeah, everything has gone absolutely perfectly so far. No issues whatsoever. There is one little thing that I did notice though, and I'm not sure whether it's a problem or not, but I did notice some residue buildup around the little rollers that run along the aluminium profile. Now, I'm assuming that over time, this will probably reduce. And I did do a quick search online and found a lot of other people, particularly with the Ender 3, were talking about this as well. Now, some people were saying that they thought that it was a buildup of dust due to the static that's created with the plastic running against the metal constantly. To me, it doesn't look like that's the case. I'm pretty sure that that is just sort of worn off little particles of the wheels themselves. But uh, I assume that over time it'll reduce as the sort of tension on those wheels reduces as they wear down a little bit. And I don't necessarily see it being an issue, but obviously if it does develop any slack or anything like that, I'll definitely let you guys know. But this is after about 26 hours of printing now. And uh, yeah, it certainly doesn't seem to be a problem as of yet, but I'll definitely let you guys know into the future if there are any issues. So yeah, look, overall the experience has been absolutely awesome so far. Very, very happy with it. Uh, no issues with the printing whatsoever and everything just went together and just worked straight out of the box, which is awesome. Now I know that there is a really strong community around these Ender printers as well. There's a lot of aftermarket firmware, a lot of aftermarket parts and upgrades and mods, so to speak, that you can do. So that was another reason that I actually chose this 3D printer as well, is that I wanted to sort of, you know, get more involved in that side of things, learn more about that stuff, and uh, yeah, see what exactly is possible with one of these machines. So I'll definitely keep you guys updated on that as well. But as a straight out of the box experience, everything went absolutely fine and uh, yeah, no issues at all to speak of. Now, if you do want to pick up one of these printers, I do have some affiliate links in the description below for both eBay and Amazon. So if you purchase using one of those links, I will receive a small commission from those sales, which goes a long way to helping out with keeping this channel running. But above all guys, I hope that you've enjoyed the video. And uh, yeah, I'm going to get stuck back into my wind simulator build now. We've finally got all the parts for part two. So let's get cracking on that one. So I'll see you guys again soon. Bye.